Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So we've been getting a lot of questions about immunity, resistance, and vaccines, and what does all this mean? You know, you may have gone to a farm before and a farmer may have told you, oh, well, my animals are immune to that, or my animals have resistance to that. And I just want to briefly talk about that today and kind of fill you in on what it might mean and what it might not mean, as these are important things for you to know when you're purchasing new animals and bringing them back to your small farm, your large farm, your homestead, what have you. Stay tuned to find out more. All right, so when you go out to somebody's farm uh, and you're looking at animals, you may have them tell you things like, oh, well, my animals don't get worms um, because they're immune to that or they're resistant to that. Or they may say, well, uh, they've never had worms. I haven't wormed them once. Um, or they don't get sore mouth. I've never had that. Or they don't get hoof rot. I've never had that. And so what does that mean? Does that mean that you can take that animal, bring it back to your farm, and you don't have to worry about that? Um, uh, we're going to use the example of worming. So let's say you go to a farm and the farmer tells you, uh, I've had these sheep or these goats for years. I have never wormed them. They don't ever get worms. Uh, you don't ever have to worry about it. You can just take them home and throw them out on pasture. Is that reality? No, that is not reality. Um, if you are crazy enough to do that, then by all means, go ahead and do it. But the reality is this, that farmer at that farm with those animals on his farm does not have a worm problem. If you happen to have worms or parasites on your farm and you bring that animal back to your farm and they are now exposed to those parasites, there is no way for you to know if that animal is going to be resistant to those parasites, if that animal is going to have any worming issues, if that animal is going to need wormed. You have to treat this like a new um, experience for that animal. You know. We need to have exposure to things in order to become immune or to become resistant over time. We'll use sore mouth as an example. Sore mouth, otherwise known as ORF, is a virus. And when you think of this virus, I want you to think of it as chicken pox that you got when you were a kid. Now, when you were a kid, uh, assuming that you're as old as I am, Chances are you probably got chicken pox. This was prior to the chicken pox vaccine. And when we were kids, we just got chicken pox because mom knew if you got chicken pox and you got it out of the way, you were never going to have to deal with it again. Now, you get the chicken pox, you got sick, everything was fine, and then you're immune to it and you don't have to worry about it anymore. anymore. And in many ways, this is how sore mouth is. Sore mouth works the same way. Once the animal gets sore mouth, they usually get it at about four to six weeks of age. They're going to get sores and pustules all around their mouth, um, and it's very, very painful for them, and it can put them off feed and make them feel crummy. Uh, it's going to last a few weeks, and then it's going to heal up. And after that, they're never going to get it again. So with that being said, you know, why would you even worry about sore mouth? Well, the reason we worry about sore mouth is, is it puts these animals off feed. Um, it can make them feel real crummy and the sores that are around their mouth, they can transmit that to mom's teats and it can damage the teat structure to the point where that mom might not be able to milk anymore. And it can also uh, cause that baby to go off of milk to where mom won't let them nurse. And then you run into an issue where now you got a bunch of bottle babies. Imagine this happening at your farm and going like wildfire throughout your farm. And that's what happens. It's very, very, very contagious. If you get one animal with it, chances are they're going to give it to every other baby that's there. There is no such thing as passive immunity for sore mouth. What do I mean about passive immunity? I mean that just like your mom wasn't able to pass immunity to chicken pox on to you as a child, this mom is not able to pass immunity for sore mouth on to uh, her babies. It's, it's not something that's given from mom to child. So you have to have the exposure in order to form the immunity. This is just one of many examples of bugs and viruses um, and bacteria that animals come into contact with. So, if you go to a farm, and let's say you go to a farm and they say, we don't get sore mouth here, we ain't never had sore mouth, uh, it's not something that we worry about, does that mean that that animal is protected? No, it does not. It means that when you bring that animal back to your farm, if it is exposed to sore mouth, 
it is going to get it. And we're using sore mouth as an example, but you can fill in the blank with this through a wide variety of different diseases and, and different problems that your animal is going to come into contact with. You have to treat everything individually. You have to keep in mind that there is an exposure component that has to happen in order for the animal to be protected. The other thing that you need to think about is this. CL, hoof rot, sore mouth, all of these things are things that get into a flock. Um, they get into a group of goats, they get into a group of sheep, and then it spread around and before you know it, it becomes a huge, huge problem. Many of the large producers in the United States have what's called a closed flock. Now, what is a closed flock? What a closed flock means is, is that they've got this group of animals that they've had for a long, long period of time. And through selection, they've been able to get some of these bad animals out and get the right animals in. And over time, they get to the point where they bring no more new animals in. They have no new genetics. Any babies are born become the new replacements for those that are getting old and passing on, and they have eliminated things that may be problematic. This is great when you are buying an animal. It is a very good selling point. They can guarantee you that the animal is not a carrier of anything. But again, as soon as you bring that animal back to your location and it now becomes exposed, to other things now you can get all these things to start to manifest themselves it doesn't mean they're immune it doesn't even mean that they have resistance you don't know yet because they have not yet been exposed to these things and this is the same trick bag that people get themselves into with worming they go to a farm and the farmer says i don't ever worm these animals i don't have any parasites i don't have any problems and that's true They've been able to just let animals die or weed animals out that got worms. The ones that are still there developed enough of a resistance that they no longer carry a very heavy load amount. And when they are out on their pasture, they're not dropping many parasites. So really, you've got a couple great things working for you. Um, you've got some animals that have resistance. And then for those animals that don't have resistance, they're really not getting a lot of exposure. You know, if you're not exposed to these worms, you're not going to get them. Now the problem becomes you pick these animals up, you bring them back to your farm where you do have worms and you put them out there and you expect that this animal is magically never going to need wormed or get checked or have any problems. And the next thing you know, you're calling me up or you're calling your vet up saying, oh my God, my animal's dying. It's got bottle jaw. It's completely pale. I don't know what to do. What am I going to do? And you've got this huge problem. So again, you have to be extremely cautious. With that being said, there's one other thing that I want you to think about. Individuals that come to visit your farm, farms that you go and visit, and public places where you're going to be around uh, farms or around farm animals, excuse me, such as county fairs. The individuals out there, they have true closed flocks. They have, you know, no, nothing's coming in. We'll also tell you that anything that leaves this farm doesn't come back. If you take an animal to the fair, it is very, very likely that that animal is going to be exposed to things such as CL, sore mouth, uh, fill in the blank. Then you bring that animal back home and now you've reintroduced it to your flock or your herd and you didn't have it before. If an individual lives on a farm or a, a farmer comes out to visit you or they bring a trailer out to your farm and they have things like hoof rot on their farm or other communicable diseases on their farm they can carry that into your farm on their boots and they can expose your flock so i know this sounds like doom and gloom and scary stuff so okay what do i do about this how do i prevent this from becoming an issue on my farm well, it's not that difficult. Um, and a lot of this stuff, I don't want you to lose any sleep over at night. This is all stuff that you just need to, you need to think about and you need to be proactive about. You have to be realistic. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to come to some kind of halfway point. I understand that a lot of you do not want to worm your animals. Get it, understand it. I don't like to worm my animals either. With that being said, you still have to check your animals for worms. 
You cannot drink the Kool-Aid to the point that you say, I'm going to bring them here, throw them out on pasture, and I'm never going to check them again because you're going to have animals die. And if you're okay with that, if you're okay with buying animals and throwing them out on pasture and just letting them die, then that's fine. Um, I would... Mm, I don't know. I would consider maybe if you have an animal that's not parasite resistant and you don't want to have them on your farm, instead of letting them just die, maybe you can sell them somewhere else or sell them to someone else that's willing to uh, worm those animals. Or maybe just do your annual selection with your animals and do some culling and maybe someone can eat them or fill in the blank. Um, there are other options, believe it or not, other than being so hardcore that you're just like, if they die, they die. Uh, for me, I don't think that's a reasonable option. You know, I think of these animals, like I think of my kids, I'm not okay. You know, if I went to the doctor tomorrow and the doctor told me, you know, Tim, uh, your daughter's got a little bit of a worm load, um, but you know what? It's not that bad. Uh, so we're, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to let her carry around a little bit of a worm load. Uh, no, that doesn't work for me. But if that works for you, hey, that's fine. Uh, the other thing, you know, with some of these diseases, I understand that you really don't want to medicate your animals. But again, the answer may be that you either do this or they die. You know, if that, now what? And so if you can't answer that question, that's a problem. And these are questions that you need to think about before you start buying animals. With that being said, you know, we're going to dive into this a little bit more as we continue to progress through this topic. If you have questions, if you have concerns, let me know. Um, send me a message, hop on the forum at Lanessa Farms Tack Box and, and let us know. We can talk more about it there as well. I'm Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again. I look forward to seeing you next time.